Hi everyone, so I'm going to start packing some orders from the March release. And I'm about halfway through my packing week. I think I'll get caught up all this week from everything. So, it looks like I need a regional A box for this one. So everything's all set up for me already. My husband tries to help me out with that so I can pack orders quicker. Alright, so let's see if I can make myself enough space here. I usually mention this in every video, but I don't pack over here. This is my soap making table. But this is where all my lights and my camera is set up, so I move everything over, but I'm always a little out of sorts right at the beginning. Okay, so I'm going to go as much in order by my, um, my packing list here, but I keep it together. So the first one is the Ridge, and it's just a blue spruce type soap. And it's kind of, I always want to say my ode, but it's not an actual ode. But um, I don't know, it's kind of like a dedication to our trip to Colorado, to Breckenridge. And I just love the scent, and it's made with Breckenridge um, beer from a local brewery there. And then, so I always check as I go. And we have Figgy Cream, total classic. It's almost gone again at this stage. So let's see, we have a banana buttermilk and a crema de cafe de cacao. Boy, I really, I really went big with that name, didn't I? Anyway, it's like my crema cacao, only it's made with the coffee. You might have seen that from that video. Where did it go? It's still here. In the bottom. Okay, so banana buttermilk. So, as it would suggest, made with banana and buttermilk, which makes it just the most speckly, delightful little guy there. Now, I am switching over to the craft boxes for the natural soap. Some of these ended up being a little bit smaller. And um, the unscented soaps are always going to be just a little bit smaller. They're made with the exact same amount of oils and the value is still there. It's just that I use less water. The same with any slow moving type batch. Now this one was actually smaller because it was before I increased my batch sizes for these. So this is the crema, the cafe, the cacao. C cacao, I'm sure I'm butchering that still, but anyway, we roll with it. Okay, so this one has a cashmere we had to completely rebox and relabel this one and the almond soap because I forgot to change my thing there and it said activated charcoal and it's most definitely not made with that. So that was a bummer when I discovered that. Okay, honey apricot. I love that one. Delightful. You're so sweet and lovely. Love it. Okay, so we have another unscented soap so maybe we'll move the unscented varieties into a new location. So I also have triple milk. This is made with coconut milk, buttermilk, and goat milk. Over. Good, good, good. Let's see, we also have citrus buttermilk and the calendula carrot double milk soap. I'll tuck those down in there. So, Check, check, check and check. Okay, so doot doot, yep, that's all that's left. Okay, so um, there's one order of the espresso and the espresso soap is always very strong. Smells good, but strong. So I take these little baggies here and I just, I just tuck it in, kind of help keep the coffee contain okay, put him right there espresso check all right so we have the pink grapefruit sea salt soap and these are the heart shapes so they kind of have to go into this big box but my round ones I'm going to be transitioning over to a different box how do I want you to go in there that seems a little a little tight. Oh, that should be alright. 
And then this one is Fizzy Lime Sea Salt. So I was trying to get a replacement for my Margarita Lime, but this one turned out to be just um, a little fizzier than like, oh, kind of like uh, champagne. That's what I'm trying to say. But I do have new boxes coming for the little round ones, so I don't have to use these um, bulkier boxes. They work great for the hearts, but really unnecessary for the rounds. Try, we're trying to streamline around here. Since my husband and son do a lot of the packaging, we're just trying to streamline the boxes and everything and the work. That's why we're not wrapping the natural soaps anymore because it's just too much work to do all of that in the quantity that I'm making right now. So my shred this time is uh, orange, yellow, and purple to go with this cute paper. Now I did have this. I bought it on clearance a couple years ago. So I have all this in stock and I decided, you know what, it's time to use this up instead of letting it sit. I also didn't feel like spending several hundred dollars on tissue and shred this month. So it worked out. So we're going to have to get in some samples. Um, I don't know if you can see this situation. Uh, this is my sample box. So I had this full stacked up. This is what my, basically my largest mold. And then I have this, and this is my naturals. I did have two of these full of soap samples. So when you make a lot of soap, you get a lot of soap samples. So this customer is new, and they ordered some naturals, and the only other natural I think I have this time is the anise, so I'm going to tuck in an anise, and let's see, didn't order any rainbows, you know rainbows are kind of classic for, for me, so let's tuck in a rainbow. I really kind of feel like a patchouli rain should go in there this time because she's, she's new and we need to introduce her to patchouli rain. Hmm. Or maybe just new on this new platform. I think we'll go with this. I think we'll go with anise and rainbow for this time. In addition to sending samples, I actually write down everything that I send to people. I've been doing that all year long so that... I can just keep track. I don't really um, refer back to it unless you ordered, you know, within a few pages worth of stuff. Um, it's just more for record keeping, so I know what I've sent out if there's any issue ever arises. I All right, so I can't really put her name on here, but I am going to mark down. This is my first in the video, so I'm going to mark down that I packed rainbow and an anise, no wax, and no treats with this one. I don't have, I wasn't inspired on treats. I'm gonna tuck in just a little, a more shred. I usually like my samples, they're kinda be on the top. One of the first things you see, so I'm gonna put in my packing list and a business card. Oh, isn't this just the prettiest paper? It has really grown on me. I held it for a long time thinking I didn't love it as much, but I do love it now. I'm really digging it. So this is my sticker for this month. This luxurious handcrafted with some paint splatters and kind of matches with the paper. This is my cute little trash can. I got it free from Uline with an order. Things like that, just little things make me happy. They're like, I don't just have a stainless steel bowl anymore for my trash can. I have a cute mini trash can. It actually has a lid with a little swingy top on it, but that part's kind of a pain. So the regional rate A's are such a nice box. Now, I am gonna finish taking These are not a flat rate shipping cost. 
They do vary. It's, if you're closer to me, it's a little less expensive to ship. If you're further away, it's usually quite a bit more. Um, so like a package like this going to California costs a lot more than something going into say Arkansas or even Texas. Um, but the nice thing is it's a nice size box and I use it mostly for boxes. I mean, I haven't even done a medium flat rate or a large flat rate this release yet at all and I've had some really large orders. I just have had a lot of soap and so it is all very compact and fits nicely in these boxes. But the point is, is yes, the price does vary between regions and how close or far away you are from me, but it also is just a nice size box. It's kind of in between a um, padded mailer or to the medium. The medium flat rate can be quite a bit more. So it's just a nice happy box and definitely one to keep in your arsenal if you are also okay, so now shipping. we have a delightful order of four soaps. So we have fresh linen and another espresso. Here we have the rainbow. The rainbow and chasing rainbows are pretty hefty bars and we have wild elderberry mmm it smells so so good so I need to mark it off so I know I have it all and since we have another espresso I'm gonna get it packaged into this wee little baggie. Okay, so let's do these together and these together and then pick out. Oh, well we'll definitely have to do chasing rainbows. Most definitely. And then what else should we send along? Ooh, green clover and aloe is a good choice. So I'm gonna put in my business card and the packing slip. I've been running out of uh, business cards, so I'm kind of, they're on order. It's taking forever to get to me this time, so I'm kind of um, being cautious about how I send them. Most of my customers have ordered many, many times. They probably have a whole drawer full of my business cards, but they probably are just throwing them away. So I'm trying to be cautious about how I'm sending them with this release until my new ones get here. Now I do like to put um, some bubble wrap around this, so I gotta go get some of that. The padded mailers and the boxes from the post office are provided free of charge and so they're really nice to use. The padded flat rate mailer is really of great great value. I can ship more items in a flat rate mailer for less than I can in just even a small box if I were just to send that separately. Priority mail. So they are of great value, and that's why I like to use the box, which you'll probably see one of those coming up soon, and put them in the mailer, because I can fit so much and still send it in this padded mailer. I always like to tape that side so it stays nice and snug and doesn't catch, because it's going, gonna go through belts and it's gonna drop a bunch and we just don't need to have any additional issues. Okay, so for this order, I'm going to be using the aforementioned box. It's a nine by six by three from Uline. And I'm going to put this inside the mailer. Now these boxes do cost me money and it can be quite costly actually to ship boxes, which it seems weird, but they are large and bulky. So, um, I do go ahead and make the purchase, but something to keep in mind is that they allow me to package more safely in the padded mailer. I'd never ship this in the padded mailer by itself. So I would have to upgrade to a different box, which means it would cost more in the long run. 
So this is going to one of my bestest customers and it just makes me smile to see these names pop, pop back up. I love seeing every order, but you know, it's extra nice when people come back and order. So two of those, Luscious Lemon, my Luscious Lemon Soy Wax Melt. We have a Fresh Strawberry Soy Wax Melt. And then we've got Coffee Shop Soy Wax Melt. Now this one is just a stronger, just a stronger coffee scent. So it's really nice. I'm contemplating putting it in a baggie since it's going right here, but these should all be sealed. They should be sealed nicely. Make sure they are. So we're gonna do that. So we'll put that down there. And then these are the coffee cake soy wax melt in the bunch shape. And they have some real coffee sprinkles. And this one is uh, more of a blend of well, coffee and cake, and it's fresh roasted coffee, cocoa beans, brown sugar, French vanilla, moist yellow cake, and buttercream. It's so good. This is really delightful. So I'm gonna put one of those right there on the bottom, because it has a flat bottom. I'm gonna put some shred there, and then put the other one on the top. It should be safe, but I have a little room, so. Let's add just a smidgen more to protect that. I ran completely out of soy wax with this release. I mean, I was like shaking out what was in the box. I was scraping the last bit of my wax melter. Um, so I don't have a lot of samples to send out with the wax, but I'll tuck in a soap too. It's all good. I tuck in a coffee soap. So this is my Dreaming of Summer, and it's a blend of melon and berries, soft laurels, and sorbet, and it's quite delightful. That was just a sample that I made up for this release. So we have two of the coffee cake. I did have donuts in this same scent, but um, those are all gone already. This, these, have, yeah, I'll be packing the rest of the, these up today also. So fresh strawberry in the coffee shop. Okay. All right, so I have some coffee ones in here. Oh, here we go, here's an espresso. Oh, it must be in a little doggy shape. That's cute. Okay, so here we go. That is a nice package. In with the invoice. Sticker. I'm using late full label sheets now that have like five splits on the back, so that's helping me out with the round stickers. I've just I've thought about um, just ordering, but I changed my stickers up enough that so far I'd much rather just print out a couple of hundred of these guys and punch on myself. Okay. Always smack those edges down or else they aren't going to want to go in the mailer. Always just, sometimes this can be a challenge. Go and pack them pretty good. Usually these are like Fort Knox and you just got to take your scissors or your knife and just slice these bags open. There's no opening these in a logical manner. I do always tape these sides down. It's been debated. Some um, post office people say they don't like it. Um, did not do that well. Um, some prefer that they be all taped up like this. And my post office, I've shipped from 
Kansas City. I've shipped from suburbs of Kansas City. I've shipped from Kansas. I've shipped from southern Missouri all over the place. And no one said a peep so far. Okay, so this order's up next. It's a nice, real nice order. Nice and big. I love all order sizes. But it's kind of fun to pack big ones. Um, this one could be debatable on whether we're going in a in a regional or not. It's not in in our local like it. So let's see. How do I pull my sample to the side? Looks like we got a bunch of multiples. I love it. Oh, whole bunch of those. Oh, whole bunch of those sweetness. Okay. This is just going into Missouri. So I'm going to be best off, I do believe, with a regional B. So hold on. So here we have the regional rate B box. This is one of those scenarios um, where you've got to, if you're also shipping, You have to analyze where your package is going because this can be more expensive than a medium flat rate. They're about the same size. I'm trying to remember. I feel like this, I think this B is a little bit wider and the medium is a little taller. I can't remember. Um, I usually don't use a lot of mediums or uh, large flat rates unless they're going to like California or the East Coast. But definitely, it's one of those things you gotta double check your prices on shipping. Alright, so we've got some bubble wrap in there to add protection. So, the point is we have to package these orders safely. So they get there without being damaged or at least mineral damage. Damage almost always still happens. Almost all of my oil orders have been coming in with the bottoms dropped out. And oh, this has been a mess. Everything, everything is just handled super rough. And so you have to take that into consideration. And if you don't have really nice UPS or super nice car mail carriers like I do, they may drop, drop kick it to your front door. So the point is, I folded that completely wrong. The point is that I, on my end, I have to package it safely to accommodate large drops, 50 pound boxes being dropped on little packages, um, you know, being drop kicked, thrown in the mud, you name it. I have to plan for it because it happens. And so if we want to file a claim on the other end, which I've actually never had to file a single claim in all the times I've been packing orders. I've had a couple of issues, but I've I've never had to file a claim. And um, if they're if they're not if you file a claim and they're not packaged right, your claim is dead in the water most usually. So it's important that it's packed right in the first place. Otherwise, you know you're out of luck. So I used to do claims when I worked at mailboxes, etc. in Florida. That was my job and and in um, Kansas too. It was my job to file claims. I had a ring go missing, a really expensive ring go missing in like uh, Trinidad. That was interesting dealing with that one. Okay, let's actually pack this order. So I have all these just breeze. So let me go ahead and get those in there. Doot, doot, doot. I got a mic confused there for a minute because my husband pulled this order and I'm like, there's no just breeze on this, but second page, clear at the top. Okay, so we have five just breeze soaps. They do smell amazing. Oh my goodness, it's a mixture of like a sinus relief fragrance and a little bit of eucalyptus. Delightful. And then we have green clover and aloe. Let's see, so we have calendula carrot, 
double milk again. These cameras are, it's in, always in a different spot. We have another pink grapefruit. So you can see I've got plenty of room. But I'm pretty certain that I wasn't going to be able to get all of these scrubby soaps in there also. Lavender, tea tree, and orange. This one was a gorgeous, gorgeous soap. And I wasn't quite sure what I thought of the blend. It's really mellowing out now and smells better better but you can definitely pick up the lavender the tea tree and the orange and so i listed these a little bit less because i wasn't really i wasn't overly confident with the scent i knew it was a nice scent and that people would enjoy it it's just i wasn't overly confident so i did list those for sale and then we have a honey apricot. I'm gonna put it there. Now I gotta come back and mark some things off. When I get to yammering, I start losing my thought process. It goes much better when I'm doing things on my own. I found I can't even do like listen to books on tape or anything because I just tune everything else out when I'm packing orders. It's just the way it is. I really kind of feel like I want these just breeze doing their own thing over here. And then we'll bring these over here. And then there we go. I'm gonna put the coffee one there by itself. And then have another of the fizzy lime. I do also have an almond cream salt soap goat with goat milk and a green clover and aloe um, salt soap, but I don't have these six orders, did not have that in there. Oh, so two fizzy lime. Sweet. Okay, here we go. I really need to mark this off. I feel like I needed like a tool belt, and I can have just a multitude of pens and my having my tape gun. Gosh, I'm all over the place trying to get to my stuff. All right. I'm gonna put my Just Breathe Soy Wax Melt right there on the top. So I still have five of the scrubby soaps. I'm going to give a little bit of padding there. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's do that. So this is the Coffee Paw Scrubby Soap. And you can see how big it is in my hand. When I use them, these little, um, you know, they just fit so nice in your hand. So I love these. Now... I do have these set up as a not for all over body use. I'm popping bubble wrap. Um, mostly, these are foot soaps. These ones are probably going to also be good in the kitchen or as a gardener's soap. You can use it on your hands and your feet, but I probably wouldn't just rub it all over your body. This would be good for, um, it should be like when your hands are a little bit greasy from handling meat or buttery things that should help but I have not tested it in the kitchen myself at this point that's just what my thoughts are so I have two citrus mint and two highbrow blends this is not this is just not cutting it for me we're gonna do that And I like to put these top to bottom like so. I don't want those to get jammed up. I decided I'm really not comfortable with that. I want these to be better protected even though they're really hard. I just feel like they don't have a box to protect them. So I just wanted to. Give them a little something extra. 
Now this is why I'm not the world's fastest order packer. You're not gonna see me throwing 100 orders into a box in a day all by myself. I just don't operate like that. Just a little bit, a little bit more goes into it for me. And I just enjoy the process of packaging. And I think it's important too that um, as a vendor we just don't kill ourselves because when you overstress and over overdo it. I mean, I'm still working till nine o'clock about every night right now, and have been for weeks actually. But when you overstress and overdo it, then you risk getting sick, and then those orders don't end up getting sent anyway. So this guy and I, this espresso soap, yeah, I think he's a sideways one. I think so. Ooh. This is looking good now. Making progress. I like this. It's just important to me. This is just part of my job. Just as, just the same as making soap and preparing for the listings and um I am super thankful for a large amount of orders and I am very um, open about processing time. But it's, I said on this one it's going to take five to ten business days for you to ship. I'm just, I'm not Amazon. So I just hope you guys all appreciate what goes into this process for me. But I sure do like sending it out to you and I do like making it. Okay, so I'm going to put in the Dreaming of Summer, and, oh goodness gracious, did we not have any rainbow soaps in there? We do have fragrance soaps. Did you add Scrubby Paw? These are very casual videos, so we're not just going to whip through these videos. This is just if you were sitting here while I was packing orders and we were just chit-chatting. Although I probably wouldn't chit-chat because I'd be busy. Let's do an almond. Yeah, that looks good. All right, so in with the invoice. And I know that's been up for debate, but it is indeed an invoice in this particular scenario. Based upon the information that is included. It's not just a packing list. That fit just nice and snug. I like it. for this box. Um, I might have been able to fit it in a padded mailer, but these ones are a little bit bulky. So here's the almond cream salt soap. I went ahead and grabbed a couple of different orders. It's um, it, kind of a grayish is the color, and I really like it. It smells great. Some of them are swirly and some are not as swirly. And then we have a green clover and aloe salt soap. customer left me the most delightful little message. Loved it. Let's see, almond cream. All right, so we have into here, we're gonna do a rainbow and a black raspberry and vanilla. And I feel like there's a chasing. Is there a chasing rainbows? No chasing on this one, okay. So, in there, we have two figgy creams. Oh, figgy cream, it's like about the best. It's 
pretty much sold out again but I shall make a new batch and embers turned out super duper Let's see, let's go sideways and we have an almond those are different scents by the way by quite a bit We're just gonna go on top like so for now. And then we have a calendula carrot and an anise. Mm, if you love black licorice, you're probably gonna love anise. If you don't like black licorice, you're probably not gonna like that stuff, but some of us love it. I'm quite a ways through my orders at this point, so and most of the Chasing Rainbows and the Rainbows have sold quite a bit. But I was just so thrilled at just how um, widespread the choices were. Some people didn't order Rainbows, which is cool. And I mean, that would have been my go-to. But I love that there was such a selection this time that people were able to just get more of what they desired. So check all these off. Embers. Let's see. Do, 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 do. Make sure those were salt. Yeah, salt. Almond. So into this one, I'm going to go ahead and tuck in a Chasing Rainbows sample. It is the most delightfully citrusy, sweet. Oh, mm, it's so good. Okay, Chasing Rainbows. And then let's put in a... Do citrus buttermilk. That'll be super duper. I have a lot of soap samples left, but I'm gonna have to be cautious because I want to make sure I have stuff left to send, you know, in the in the kind of slow time between releases. My sticker. So spring has sprung in Missouri. And it's been so nice. It's so green. It's been around 70. I've actually been running the air conditioner. It's starting to get a little warm in here. Being up in the attic like it is. I've already been on air conditioner all week. then go back to my little box here little nine by six by three so into this one I'm gonna put in a banana buttermilk and an embers I actually like the ends typically to go there and of the ridge at least I came out of that trip with a little bit of love for Breckenridge. I did love Breckenridge, did love Colorado, but that trip was just a woo, that was a mess. That trip was wild. We keep going back and forth. Do we uncover the fifth wheel this year or do we just have a recovery year from that trip? I'm getting itch to go back to Montana. It's just, it's really bugging me. Okay. We have an almond. And a honey apricot. Love this. So, so good. Okay. And then, here we go. Here's a Chasing Rainbows. Love it. I love the label. I love everything about it. it smells so good. It smells amazing. So I think I have about one daffodil getting ready to come up, tulips 
I don't know what it is with us, but we do not grow tulips and daffodils worth a darn. It's been like this in every place we've lived. And so, I don't know, they're always puny and pathetic. I've never liked spring. This is like my first year that I've liked spring. Even my husband mentioned it the other day. He's like, you actually like spring this year. It, well, that's a weird thing, isn't it? For people not to like spring, but you know what? Spring usually means dirty ground smells. Kind of that muddy earth mix at, mixes with asphalt, you know, when you live in the city. I don't live in the city anymore, but you still get that muddy earth smell. And maybe it's because I haven't been able to grow tulips and daffodils. <laughs> it seems sad. So into this one, let's put in a patchouli rain. I have sent a lot of patchouli rains with this, really. I love it. Not just samples, actual soap bars. Just none in these ones that we've done today. And then, let's just tuck in a regular rainbow. Isn't that nice? much of a winter here in Missouri this year. We never got any measurable snow, nothing that actually stuck around at all. So hey, we might as well move on to spring. But I think having our um, steers and wanting them to have nice green grass to eat has really caused me to love spring this year. I was pregnant in well, two springs, I was newly pregnant, and, you know, you just kind of, ooh, you just don't feel very good. <laughs> and I never had morning sickness bad at all, but, you know, it's just, it's just not very good. Just, I'm telling you. So, um, a couple of smells that, tulips. I had a Yankee Candle tulip thing hanging in my truck at the time when I was pregnant with my first... I just can't do with tulips quite as much the same now. And with another one, kind of ruined me on asparagus for a good long while. I finally have come back to the asparagus front, but um, I can't do a frittata, I'll tell you that. Mm, no quiches. Mm -mm. Nope. Not happening. So I really think that's why. Spring has never been that much of a season for me. But I love it this year. I'm just, I didn't even used to like daffodils. What's up with that? What are, I mean, but now I'm obsessed with daffodils. I just don't get it. I fluctuate quite a bit in life. I do love lilacs. I could, if I had lilacs, I would plant them in a circle and I'd put a chair right in the middle. And I might camp there. That is one time I'd probably stay outside for an extended period of time. But we don't have any lilacs here, so that's lame. I had the best lilac at our house in Belton, up in Kansas City. It was the best lilac. It was huge. We planted just the teeny tiniest bush where we had taken out a tree. And I don't know if it's true or not, but I think some of the... Uh, you know, the, maybe the rotting tree provided nutrients for the lilac, but we had the best lilac. But not down here. We can't hardly get those suckers to grow. So, I don't know. All right, guys. So, I think I'm going to call that good. I've packed six orders, and I do go ahead when I go off camera. I put their initials on, and then I'm going to go over to my computer and print all their shipping labels. I'm only going to do one this time. I have a lot of orders to get out, and I'm so thankful. I'm so thankful, but I'm also making oodles of soap. So I got to just keep my process going. So I am going to probably keep all the filming stuff up for video later. We'll see for soap making. We'll see if that happens or not. But other than that, I'm going to haul all this stuff back over and I'm going to put a dent in some orders today. All right, guys, I'll talk to you later.